What's up, everyone? Jacob Roach back here from The Killing Joke Studios and Mixing with Metal. Uh, today, I'm going to be starting my Melodyne Masterclass. Now, this is going to go over a lot of different uses for Melodyne, the different features for Melodyne, everything to do with Melodyne. It is a fantastic piece of software, and I got a question about it, actually, and so I figured I'd go through everything. So this first video is going to be over just the basic function of Melodyne, and that is tuning vocals. I mean, you yeah, tuning monophonic signals or whatever, but really Melodyne's mostly used for just tuning vocals, okay? So we're going to just go with, uh, let me just break this here. We're going to just go with this first line, okay? I'm so sick of all your lies. I'm all right, cool. So I'm so sick of all your lies, okay? And we're going to just go ahead and tighten that up with Melodyne. So typically what I do is when I'm using Melodyne, I make sure that it is the first thing in my chain. Now, if you're recording through hardware compressors and stuff like that, it's not a huge deal, uh, but this just gives me the cleanest source possible so I can do that. So uh, yeah, remove that. So one more time. I'm so sick of all your lies. So it's pretty close, and that's the goal with Melodyne. We're not trying to uh, drastically change the voice, and if you do have to, maybe you need to reconsider where you're tracking. We're just trying to kind of uh, level it out a little bit. So I'm going to go over to Melodyne, load it up, which might take a minute. <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, so the goal is to obviously get good source tracks originally and get them pretty close to pitch already so that Melodyne doesn't have to do so much heavy lifting and we don't have as many artifacts, okay? So what we're going to do is now we got Melodyne loaded up, we're going to hit transfer and we're going to play. I'm so sick of all your lies. I'm so sick. Cool. So Melodyne just recorded that in, all right, and we can see where everything's at. So typically what I do to start out is I select everything, okay? And this can be really helpful. Sometimes if you know the key of the song, which uh, do your best to find out what it is uh, if you don't know it, you can actually go up to options, pitch grid, and go scale snap, scale snap excuse me, so that uh, it, you know, Melodyne doesn't snap into something that's out of key. Uh, we're just going to use Chromatic Snap for now uh, because this is already pretty close, all right? So then what we're going to do is we're going to go to our pitch tool, we're going to select everything, and we're just going to double click. Great. Now we're going to listen back to that. I'm so sick of all your lies. I'm cool. So that already did something. And for something that's close, uh, really just double clicking and putting everything on generally does it for you. Uh, now, you may need a little bit more finessing or a little bit more uh, you know, love given to a particular track if it's you know, off. This track is fine, but uh, for the sake of demonstration, let's go and demonstrate some of these other pitch tools. So we have our normal pitch tool, then we have pitch modulation and pitch drift. Pitch modulation would be like vibrato, and pitch drift would be if someone's drifting off pitch. So let's go to our pitch modulation tool, okay? So we can see on this last note, there's a little bit of vibrato in the end. Cool. And say we want to get rid of that. We could double click, and it would sound really robotic and weird. I'm so sick of all your lies. So it's going to sound a little bit weird, and we can double click to revert back to where it is. Uh, so, what I can do is drag to get more or less of that effect. Or, say for instance, I want more vibrato. I can get more by doing this. I'm so sick of all your lies. I'm so Again, in this demonstration, that's really not what's needed, but that can help, say, for instance, if someone is getting off pitch and you maybe want to tame it a little bit more. Another thing you can do is this pitch drift tool. Okay? And this functions similarly. But as you can see, it reshapes the waveform instead of flattening it out. So this would be zero pitch drift. Okay, let's listen to that. I'm so sick of all your lies. Okay, and this would be 100% pitch drift. I'm so sick of all your lies. Okay, and say for instance down here. We'll pull that in a little bit. Let's pull this in. Just kind of tighten it up a little bit and see what that did. I'm so sick of all your lies. Cool. And that gets us a little bit more close. And I think that, that that's probably a better tool um, for 
to kind of get that done. Now, there is other things that you could do. You can correct timing in Melodyne as well. Uh, so if we zoom in here, we can correct this timing if we want. Uh, it's not going to. Come on. That gets everything perfectly on time. I'm so sick of all your lies. And yeah, it, it would probably need a little bit more love. So, you know, we could take this and why is this not time handle? Anyway, that that gets us our effect. So let's let's just go ahead and undo that because um, I don't think we really need to in this case. And so uh, you can set up timing and fix timing and Melodyne as well. Typically, I don't really use Melodyne for timing. What I do is I come in here and I just manually do it. So I'll just come in and find a transient, uh, you know, where a word begins, break it, and then slide that to the grid. And that's typically what I do. And I use a vocal line for uh, lining up the doubles. So yeah, that's basic usage of Melodyne. Um, in the next video, we're going to go over how to generate harmonies with Melodyne. And then in a future video, we're going to be going into things like tuning bass with Melodyne, which can be very important because typically uh, basses that I record are not set up properly. So uh, thanks so much for tuning in, guys. I will see you next time.